We'd like to greet you this morning in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for tuning in to Notes for the Morning. Those of you that have been following us uh, understand that we're trying to explain the armor of God, the warrior, the warrior that's in the battle between the flesh and the spirit man, the new man. He must have on the armor of God to wage this spiritual war. And so we've been trying to describe the different pieces of armor as found in Ephesians 6, 14 through verse 18. We are now ready for the sword of the Spirit. Paul writes in verse 17, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, why would the soldier need a sword? The Roman, ancient Roman uh, warrior, he had all of these separate pieces that Paul is going over in Ephesians 6. Now he's talking about a sword. The sword they had was a short sword. It was two-edged. And when we talk about the spiritual sword, we're talking about the Word of God. Now, when you look at the Word of God as translated Word in the written Word of God, In John 1 and 1, we have in the beginning was the Word. That word is logos, which means the full expression of God. And the Word was with God, and the Word, or the logos, was God. And we find in that same set of verses in chapter 1 of John, verse 18, the Word became flesh, or rather verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And then in verse 18, it says, the word, he is the one that declared God. But the word that we're using today, the word that the apostle Paul used today is the word uh, rhema. The Greek word rhema has as its definition, the spoken words of Christ. This is found throughout the word in John 14, 10, He said, Believe us not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the words, the rhema, that I speak unto you. And so we can find this in many places. Another good example is John 6, 63. It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words are the rhema, the spoken word, that I speak unto you, that they are spirit and they are life. Jesus gives us another example in Matthew 4 and 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word or rhema that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So Paul is speaking under the inspiration of the Spirit that the believer, the good soldier of Jesus Christ, is to be armed with the very word of God. Those words that were spoken by Jesus and the Spirit had these same words written down by the apostles, which we have in the four Gospels. The benefit for the good soldier of Jesus Christ is that if he speaks the word of God, he's speaking the very power of God. And so in Psalms 119.11, the Bible reads, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Do we have, as good soldiers of Jesus Christ, have we hidden the very word of God in our heart? David said he did that he might not sin against thee. In Psalm 119 and 105, he said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. If the good soldier of Jesus Christ is going to wage war, he needs to be armed with the sword of the Spirit, which is the spoken words of Christ, the spoken words of God. They will keep him from sin. They would illuminate his mind and his pathway so as to what to think, what to do, and where to walk. In fact, in verse 130, David writes, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. There is no victory experienced by the believer, the good soldier of Jesus Christ, in the war, in his mind. 
He must not have carnal weapons, but he must have God, the power of God, to the pulling down of strongholds. He must bring every imagination and every thought into the obedience of Christ. And so the word of God is more to be desired than fine gold. Yea, much more than fine gold, David said. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Why is that? Moreover, by them is thy servant warned. And in keeping of them, there is great reward. So when we are in the battle with the old man, the new man must arm himself with the very words of Christ. And so David concluded chapter 19 of the book of Psalms in verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Therefore, if we are going to do any kind of battle with the old man, we cannot do it in our own power. We have not the intelligence. We have not the strength. We have not the intellect. We cannot outdo the old man. The adversary, the old man, is stronger than we are. And so every child of God must have as his sword, the sword of the Spirit. He must have the power of the words of Christ. Jesus Christ, the very word of God, is the only way the enemy can be defeated. So Jesus is our example, as I related to you in Matthew 4.4. 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And those three times that the devil tempted Christ in the wilderness in Matthew 4, he used the word of God against the enemy. And so let it be an example for us today that when we are waging war with doubts, with uh, defeat even, even trying to, in the effort of the old man to destroy us, a uh, depression, all of those things, discouragement, we have to fight the enemy with the word of God. That's why he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. What do we have in the sword of the spirit? We have the entirety of the word of God. We have every promise given to us, all promises. Everything that's in the written word of God is ours as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. There is no way without the foundation in the believer of the word of God will he have the light and understanding and instruction as to how to war against the mind in the mind, against the vain imaginations and the vain thoughts and the evil thoughts to bring every one of these in subjection to Christ. There is no way without the promises being his sword, without the instructions being his sword, without the example of the Lord Jesus and what he said in his word, shall we be able to fight the enemy. It appears to me that many Christians need to read Matthew 5, 6, and 7, which we call the Sermon on the Mount. That is one of the greatest discourses that Jesus ever presented. It is the greatest discourse concerning the characteristics of of the kingdom man. And so if you want to operate in the kingdom on a spiritual plane, you have to follow the words of Christ, arm yourself with them, and take them into battle with you. Our time has come and gone, so let us pray. Father, we thank you today that we have the written word of God. We are commanded to study the word of God. We are commanded to that we would arm ourselves with the word of God. The only way we can do it, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So matter, no matter what the enemy presents itself today, no matter what deception he brings on us, no matter what 
compromise he brings on us. No matter what kind of lust is lurking in the old man as he tries to present it and tries to get it conceived in the believer, we can take the word of God and battle those three things that the old man presents. We are not under the dominion of sin, Paul said in Romans 6. We do not have to serve sin. We are servants of righteousness. And I pray today, God, that you will arm everyone that's under the sound of my voice that is a believer, that they will see the necessity of memorizing, uh, meditating, observing, obeying the word of God. For Joshua said in Joshua 1 and 8, this is our success when we observe to do all that's written in the word of God. May we meditate on it day and night. May it be more, as Job said, than our necessary food, that we might be able to fight this spiritual battle and bring down strongholds with the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.